All right, next is scales. Scales is supposed to measure your technique, your evenness in the fingers, your evenness metrically, like how even are your notes? Are you playing like da 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 da? Or are you playing like this? One time I listened to this guy audition and the first scale he played was really slow. It was a B major scale. He's like do 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 etc. And then the next scale, he went da 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 da. And I was like, whoa whoa whoa! What are you doing? You want to play all your scales at the same tempo. If you're playing it in different tempos, especially like he did, what you're doing is showing the judges, hey, I have a glaring weakness that I have not worked on. Why would you do that? If you have weaknesses, at least hide them if you're gonna perform. Don't do that. Another thing that I think is probably a big thing that people don't realize, if you already have your scales, if they're not calling out random scales to you, if you know the scales you need to come in and play, you need to have the pacing pretty uniform. So for example, one, two, one, two, rest, two. One, two, one, two, rest, rest, etc., etc. If you just do it like it's just kind of like sporadic. I don't know. Maybe that's a big thing, but I think it leaves a better impression on the judges in general. It shows maturity that you've really organized your scales and put them in a nice pace, a nice consistent pace where the listener can be fully engaged the whole time and not feel any unnecessary pauses. And another purpose of scales is to show how uniform you have your sound your pitch and your volume across all registers of the horn i heard someone doing crescendos in the scales don't don't put dynamics in your scales like i said purpose to measure uniformity can you play evenly across all registers do you pinch your sound when you go up top do you get really honky in the low range you don't want to you want to sound the same you want to sound very uniform across all registers you don't want to have a glaring weakness anywhere. And when you're playing with dynamics, you kind of mask that. Like, no, it defeats the purpose. And it's it's honestly just kind of cringy. Like, this, this is not your etude. It's not sight reading. This is just your scales. Just show us you as a mechanic of the saxophone. This is what the purpose of scales is. And it showcases us your sound. Scales showcase you as a saxophonist, not quite as a musician yet. That will be for the next parts, like the etudes and the sight reading. Scales shows how are you technically, and how is your sound. I'll demonstrate you examples of unevenness, whether it's in sound across registers, or if it's in my fingers. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Also with scales, a lot of people tend to go really sharp in those higher registers because that's when they start biting, which you shouldn't be biting! Stop biting! And because of this, the pitch is really wonky. Say the first note you play, and then you reach to the top octave, it sounds like a different note sometimes. That was not the same note. Like, that was not the same note, obviously, right? A lot of the time that I judged, so many people just didn't have a tonal concept in their mind where... Sorry, I'm itching. They didn't have a tonal concept in their mind. And the best way to approach this is to practice with a drone. All right, now the next section is the etude. The most important thing to learning an etude, you know, the required etude, is to find a good recording. There are so, so many bad recordings on YouTube or just all over the internet of any song on saxophone. You have to be really nitpicky when it's time to choose your resource of a recording because this is what you're going to be aspiring to sound like. This is going to be your reference. You want it to be as good as possible. You want to choose the best one you could find. Um, for a lot of those A2s, Tamer Sullivan had the best recordings, hands down. Uh, he was always my reference. So in this recording, ask yourself, are they playing really expressively? Are they playing with very good vibrato? Is their technical passages very even, very seamless? Is their phrasing great? Is their tone gorgeous? Did they play every note correctly? Did they play every rhythm correctly? Did they include the dynamics? Did they interpret the piece? the way that the composer would probably want it to be interpreted. When you're looking for a reference, really set the bar high. Which recording is excellent? You can't just choose some random video and be like, all right, this is how you play it. Like, no. But once you find your reference recording, I want you to look at your music and listen to the recording too. I want you to really observe. What are the things in this page that aren't even written that he's making come alive. A really common flaw that a lot of high schoolers make is thinking that musicality is dynamics. Musicality is so much more than dynamics. Dynamics is part of musicality, but you can't just play some notes, play the dynamics with it, and boom, you got some music. No, it, there's so many other variables that goes into playing musically. One is finding the phrases, the musical sentences. Compare these phrases. Are these phrases complementing each other? Are any of these phrases like a transition phrase? Or one of these phrases more climatic than the other phrase? Do one of these phrases just repeat? Do one of these phrases or two of these phrases act as a call and response. Find each phrase and ask yourself, what does it mean in reference to the bigger picture? What does this phrase want you to do and how can you incorporate it? Sometimes some phrases should be loud even though there's no fortissimo or any dynamic marking marked on it. A lot of stuff is implied, and it's up to your musical intelligence to decide what to do with each section. So I'm going to demonstrate a few phrases, and then we're slowly going to incorporate some musical parts into it. So I'm going to use this piece as an example to show you how to incorporate some musical decisions into your playing. I'm going to call this musical weapons. So musical weapons are things like dynamics, yes, but there's more. There's vibrato. Vibrato is something you should strategically place. 
tapering notes, um, which means to decrescendo into silence without the use of your tongue. Um, shaping notes, how I shape in the classical saxophones, what my teacher now uh, has taught me. That is to play the lower notes within a group of notes louder and play the higher notes within a group of notes softer. So in this case, the A would be louder than these notes. So for vibrato, I place vibrato where I think there should be some added energy into the piece. I don't believe in vibrato just being everywhere. That just sounds dumb. Don't abuse vibrato. Place it strategically. Like why would you use vibrato? So right here, I would not use vibrato because this song is implying that it's coming out of silence. And then it grows. I'm a terrible singer, by the way, but I'm definitely going to put vibrato here because this is a tenth note. This is the major seventh, which is the third note of the five chord here. This is an E7 chord. This is going to be the third. And five chords are known for producing tension. And here's our resolution. So a tense note, resolution. And I put a T, meaning to taper this note. Don't cut it off with your tongue. Now right here. This reinforces what that just said. So I'm going to play this a little louder. That's why I circled it. Now I'm going to shape this phrase. I'm going to put vibrato on this, and this will be our resolution. So as this quiets down, the energy will die away with this note. And then I'm going to take a breath, a crescendo. This definitely needs a lot of energy. The purpose of these notes were literally just to build up tension for this note. So we need to do it justice. We need to do these three guys justice and give this note some energy. I'm gonna put a good bit of vibrato right there. We're gonna shape this. Let me write that. So as we go down here, we're gonna crescendo. What do you know? Crescendo's already here. And this is our harmonic change. This is a non-diatonic note, so we're definitely going to play this louder than um, the rest. It's really just an elegant, almost marcato line. Definitely. See, this is almost almost marching band, but it's not. It's a very lyrical piece, but. Da, da. Even you have the dotted eighth into this, so this is almost like a style change for just a brief moment, just something that nuance. And we're going to put vibrato on this note da. because this is the climax of this whole phrase so far. Da, da, de, do, 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 do. We're going to put vibrato on this note and no vibrato. Because this is our tension. And then uh, resolution. So let's go ahead and see how it sounds. <laughs> 